Jesus he walked this earth and even though he was the least expected person to show grace right because he was perfect he was without sin he could have judged us he was in a position to to judge us to bring justice but he didn't he just went around showing love of course there was he, he was bringing correction through teachings but he didn't judge people necessarily but he said that people you judge yourself when you do not believe okay so Jesus he went around actually hanging around a lot of sinners a lot of people who were humble in heart who was open to receive the truth but also uh, people who were in need of a lot of grace uh, Pharisees on the other hand were full of what pride right because they saw themselves as better as the sinners as the, the ones in low position in society Jesus said they actually hindered people from entering the kingdom of God hindering them f uh, from receiving deliverance actually that the Pharisees put jokes as like on, on their shoulders making it even more heavy for them burdens and a bunch of religious duties they had to fulfill while Jesus takes away your religious duties and your musts and your requirements and says I did it all for you so that you can enter into rest where peace that surpasses understanding dwells now as a people of God as children of God we are peacemakers as he says in Matthew chapter 5 verse 9 and making peace means that we go around and we show grace to everyone grace basically understands and respects that this person has not figured it all out just like you have not figured it all out you know we all have different pasts we all have different backgrounds and if we go and judge people like why are you not where i'm at because they don't have the same life as you they don't have the same backgrounds they don't have the same personality nor the same gifts so grace meets people wherever they're at without compromising the truth now jesus was the full manifestation of truth but also the full manifestation of grace jesus even said father forgive them because they don't know what they're doing so jesus understood they're, they're, they had lack of knowledge lack of understanding and that's why he showed grace to them he was much harder on the pharisees why because he knew they had re read the bible read the scripture they had some kind of knowledge about the law yet they did not follow it and actually me and my friend we read today in james chapter 5 and verse 17 that he who knows what to do but doesn't do it he is sinning now a lot of people especially those who jesus spent a lot of time around they didn't know better they were born in these these homes in these uh, non-jewish jewish homes with traditions with with you know perhaps their parents were all unbelievers or not religious in any kind of way they didn't really believe maybe in god as most people in sweden at least don't do today sadly but these people didn't know better and there's so many people out in the world today they don't know better so when you point fingers and you say oh look at that sinner or oh, look how he is living oh what a sinner how dirty jesus actually said to peter in a vision what i have called clean you should not call dirty or unclean so whatever god says is clean is clean so as men we cannot judge on the outward because jesus never judged anyone on the outward though he told the pharisees that they did the pharisees always judge on the outward while jesus sees to your heart a lot of people they might live in in sin but in their heart they daily have this relationship with god they are repentant of their sins they're willing to be free from the yoke and the slavery of sin but they have not yet encountered the anointing of god so that they may be set free from all their slavery all their demons and their addictions so 
as an ambassador of the Lord Jesus Christ on earth, you are to walk in this grace where you show people what love is, what love looks like, what humility looks like. Humility is the essence of acceptance towards other people's weaknesses and mistakes. It means you accept and you recognize and you, you're okay with where they're at. You recognize, okay, they're weak here. They do a mistake here. But you don't judge them, but rather you point them in the right direction or you show an example of how they can do it better. Without judging them, without looking with a bad eye towards them or slandering them behind their back or telling your brother in Christ, oh, don't go to that church. I met a guy. He was crazy, man. He did this and he said this and he believed this. No. Christianity lies in the heart. There's a big difference between those who walk in love and those who talk in love. A lot of people, they have persuasive language, words. They might, might sound loving, but behind your back, they're slandering you. You don't want to be one of these people who carry bitterness offense and unforgiveness towards your friends, brothers, towards other people. Because Jesus said, if you don't forgive others, your father will not forgive your transgressions. That's a serious word. Remember what it says in 1 John chapter 4, that he who claims to love God, or know God, but he hates his brother, he's a liar. You know, if you look back at your life, let's say five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, you will recognize that you were not as mature as you are now. So the person that you meet, that atheist, that agnostic, that unmature Christian could have been you. That's why Jesus said that you should love others as yourself, because it could have been you. Anyone you meet, anyone you talk to, it could have been you. How would you like to be treated? How would you like to have been taught? Would you, would you have liked to be rebuked, to be corrected? Or would you want, would have you, or in the past, would you want people to just pat you on the, on your shoulder, on your back and say, everything is fine. You're heading towards heaven, bro. Just keep living in that sin. Or would you want someone who shake you and tell you the truth in grace and love? You should never, never hit the limit when it comes to grace. Grace should always be sufficient in your heart what i mean is you should never hit the point where you say that's enough i i don't tolerate you anymore i don't love you anymore i've had enough of you no but as a believer our grace is overflowing endless we just give grace upon grace upon grace when people fall, we take their hand and we rise them up again. And they fall again, you take the, their hand and you rise them up again. Until they become solid on their own by creating and developing a relationship with Jesus Christ. It's easy to lose patience with people. But remember, patience is one of the fruits of the Spirit. A lot of people will not grow in the Spirit or mature as fast as others. With these people, you need patience. One of my dear disciples in the Lord, Antonino, who maybe some of you have seen, he told me, he told us something nice yesterday. He said that fruit matures and develops slowly, but consistently. And that's how it is for a lot of us Christians. The fruits of the Spirit, they slowly grow. 
and you die from your flesh and your surface desires slowly but surely and when you look back to, at your life one or two years ago you realize whoa i don't even recognize that person anymore that's how it is to grow with christ you have to have patience with people you may think why do i not see the the fruit in that person's life that i expect the maturity why doesn't he grow as fast as i think or i i i thought he would because that person isn't you that person is an own individual with a, with their own past and god rather make sure that their foundation is solid than just building a fast quick tower that doesn't have a solid foundation and that will fall no, rather take time and make sure their foundation becomes solid, that their faith is pure. A lot of people, their faith is not pure, it's not real. You could read in 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 6 that God tests our faith to see that it's pure, that it's real. A lot of Christians in churches today, or Christians overall, their faith is not real, not pure. Because... They have just been convinced to believe, or they believe because of tradition, because their parents believe, or because they were told to believe, or because they've just, they had unpure motives when they received Jesus or started to believe in God. So when, when they enter into trial or, or challenges hit their life, their faith is not able to stand. We, gr we grow slowly, but surely. You need your faith to stand the test of time. And you need to be a man and a woman full of God's grace. Grace being undeserved favor. Watch out that you don't become like the heathens, the unbelievers. Who most of them need to receive something in order to give something you want to be a giver out of abundance because every time you give you're giving not only from yourself but from god and god he has treasures in glory for you that he wants to overwhelm you with and bless you with but unless you start giving love grace material things money whatever to others he doesn't really need to bless you he wants to see that you're using what you have to bless and love others so that he can trust you with more grace defeats judgment how many people do we can we find in this world who have met christians who judge them who look down on them being in their presence, they feel small, unimportant, weak. They don't feel special. They don't feel loved. Around Jesus, everyone felt love. He met them where they were at. He acknowledged their weaknesses, their sins, their problems. But instead of judging their weakness and their problems. He became the solution to their weaknesses and problems. God has not given you discernment to point fingers. Oh, he's sinning! Great job, Sherlock. No, he has given you discernment so that you might discern and recognize demonic spirits and problems in people. Why? To judge them? No! So that you can remove them. So that you can be a solution to the problem. So that you can release the Holy Spirit and power. And break the yoke. Break the bondage. Break the darkness. The anxiety. The, the Whatever it could be. Fear of death. Depression. How God anointed Jesus Christ. To destroy the works of the enemy. Of the devil. That's Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. Treat people like yourself want to be treated. It's a proverb everyone has heard. 
but how many do actually live by it? How many actually reflect on it? How do you want to be treated? Or how did you want to be treated back then when you were an unbeliever, an unmature Christian, agnostic, atheist? And make sure you treat others the way you would have liked to be treated. Don't look down on people, but look across, saying, hey, I'm no better. I'm also, I've also sinned, but there's a way for you to be free from that sin, to be free from that bondage. I know a guy that can help you. <laughs> His name is Jesus. Amen. Let us pray together. Father, I thank you for each and everyone who is listening to this message. Lord, I ask you that you will fill us right now with your grace. You said Jesus was filled full of grace. Make us full of grace. That we may not look down on people, Lord, but that we may help those who are in need. Lord Jesus, just like you walked among the sinners and those who were in the low class of society. May us not look down on these people, but may these people be drawn into our lives. And may we minister your love and your grace to everyone. I break all pride in Jesus' name. Every hard heart... Every heart that have judged other Christians or your brothers or anyone, any kind of offense, unforgiveness, bitterness. I say be broken right now in Jesus' name. Receive that healing. Let your heart be soft again. Receive a gentle spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I believe your heart has been softened. Amen. I hope you were encouraged by this message. And I stand in faith that from this day on, you will see increase of God's grace in your life. Not because of your works, but because you treat others with love and grace. Amen. Thank you for watching. Love you all. Bye-bye.